Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Amanda. I hope everyone is doing well. So in this video, we're going to just be talking about um, how God will use supernatural signs in the heavens to signal the beginning of his intervention to punish humanity for sins and rescue us from self-destruction. So let's just jump right into it. Through the prophet Joel, God spoke of astonishing signs in the heavens before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. God gave this message to Joel for those living in the last days, saying, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. The prophet Isaiah also described these same events, saying, for the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. And that's in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. The sixth seal in the book of Revelation. The prophecies of Joel and Isaiah match the events described by the Apostle John in a vision of the end times. In Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 14, it says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Signs in the heavens announce the wrath of the Lamb. When the sixth seal is opened and these heavenly signs are revealed, it will have a dramatic effect on those who see them. Um, it can chapter 15 continues on by saying, and the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. The reason God will orchestrate these signs in the heavens is to announce that he will now intervene in human affairs in a very visible way. Jesus mentioned the heavenly signs would follow right on the heels of another prophesied event. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Um, tribulation precedes the signs in the heavens. What was Jesus referring to when he said Im immediately after the tribulation of those days? The great tribulation will be a time of terrible trial for the modern descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These people will suffer famines, pestilence, military invasion, and enslavement. Additionally, the tribulation will be a time of widespread persecution against the saints of the true church of God at the end of the age. If one were to look at the combined list of the cosmic events prophesied by the prophets Joel, Isaiah, the Apostle John, and Jesus, it would look something like this. A great earthquake occurs. Every mountain and island will move out of its place. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke will be seen. The sun, moon, and stars will have their light blocked, making them appear as dark as night. The moon will appear blood red. The stars of the heavens will appear to be falling to the earth, and the sky will be seen receding like a scroll when it is rolled up. God always sends a message of warning first. Not wishing for any to perish, God's practice has been to send prophets to warn people to repent of their sins prior to inflicting punishment for disobedience. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32, it says, God says, for I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies. Jesus posed an important question to his disciples and us today when he said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And that's in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. He proceeded 
or he, he predicted that the latter days would be very evil and that many would simply ignore the signs of the times, much like the people in Noah's day ignored the warning message before the flood came. Those who never took heed of the warning signs will be in terror at the appearance of Jesus Christ. But Jesus promised the faithful, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your, redemp your redemption draws near. For those who take heed, God provides a way of escape for his wrath. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord, Do not learn the ways of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the sign of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. And in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 26, it says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Pride is the main reason many will not repent and change their ways, and pride is the basis for wickedness. People will rebel be selfish, make excuses, be unable to see beyond themselves, and they will get in their own way. Don't be prideful. Don't think you're always right or that only your opinion or your feelings matter. Don't make excuses or justify yourself to why you're the exception to the rule. Be accountable and use this time as an opportunity before it's too late. No matter how hard it is or whatever doubts you have, try to use this time wisely to prepare and do important things. Don't just think of yourself, but think of others. Being prideful is a dangerous thing, and it's not about who's right, but it's about what's doing what's right and not making any excuses or complaints. So I hope people take this warning seriously. No one is perfect, but don't waste time trying to justify yourself as superior or the exception. So... There's a lot of factors on why our Earth is changing and why we're seeing an increase in the temperature here on Earth. There's a lot of different factors that are affecting this. So, so NASA researchers track slowly splitting dent in Earth's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field acts like a protective shield around the planet, repelling and trapping charged particles from the sun. But over the South America and Southern Atlantic Ocean, an unusually weak spot in the field called the South Atlantic Anomaly allows these particles to dip closer to the surface than normal. Particle radiation in this region can knock out onboard computers and interfere with the data collection of satellites that pass through it. The South Atlantic Anomaly is also of interest to NASA's Earth scientists who monitor the changes in magnetic field strength there, both for how such changes affect Earth's atmosphere and as an indicator of what's happening to Earth's magnetic fields. The scientists believe that it was caused by solar winds. R reports suggest that multiple solar winds smacked into Earth's ma magnetic sphere, causing it to weaken and cracks to open in its structure. Every 11 years or so, the sun experiences periods of low and high solar activity, which is associated with the amount of sunspots on its surface. These dark regions, some of which can reach the size of Earth or larger, are driven by the sun's strong, constantly shifting magnetic fields. Over the course of a solar cycle, the sun will transition from a calm to an intense active period. During the peak of activity called a solar maximum, the sun's magnetic poles flip. Then the sun will go quiet again during a solar minimum. Solar activity is continuing to spike. The current solar cycle, known as Solar Cycle 25, has been full of activity more so than expected. The increased activity has included strong solar flares and coronal mass ejections or large clouds of ionized gas called plasma and magnetic fields that erupt from the sun's outer atmosphere. The solar storms generated by the sun can affect electric power grids, GPS, aviation and satellites in low earth orbit these events can also cause radio blackouts and even pose risks for crews in space missions so there's been a lot of solar storms that are increasing 
Um, for instance, on July 12th, blackouts hit Earth as a 8M class solar flare erupts in 24 hours. In the early hours of July 12th, a single M class flare was produced by an emerging sunspot on the northern eastern limb of the sun and it sparked blackouts over North America. But since then, as many as eight different M class solar flares have been produced by the same region. Um, it's called Sunspot AR3372. The flares have sparked a rolling series of blackouts all over Earth. The sunspots appears to be highly reactive and crackling with activity. This has also raised concerns about any coronal mass ejections released in the process that can potentially strike us in the coming days. When Jesus was asked what the signs will be when he returns, he said to look for signs in the changes of weather, the sun, the stars, the moon, and to recognize that those are the signs of his return. And those signs are happening now as we speak. There's a lot of changes going on on earth that have never taken place. And it's concerning for some, but I think it's it's really just for us an opportunity to use this time wisely and to help our friends and families and help ourselves spiritually, more so spiritually than physically prepare and just do what we have to do. So there's no time to waste. So I do encourage everyone to prepare your yourselves and, and be like Noah and lead your families and really understand what is important which it is family it's that oneness it's helping each other out um, our spiritual and our physical families so i definitely think this is something that we need to pay attention to and really observe and monitor and just really know what's going on and be up to date on the changes happening with the sun with the earth with a lot of just different things that could affect us here on earth and potentially be very deadly. So we need to prepare and pay attention to important things like that because the mainstream media is not really alerting people and that's concerning. So, so just pay attention guys. And another thing I wanted to mention was I stumbled across this really cool um, stone. It's called uh, sunjite, and it's primarily found, I think it's only found in Russia. And and I've been using it to infuse my water, and I really like it because it um, will block EMF um, and radiation and stuff like that. So it's interesting because it is a black stone made of 99% carbon and it's mainly found in Russia. The stone is a unique composition um, and it's made of 60 carbon atoms. Along with fullness, it consists of nearly all the minerals on the periodic table. And it kills viruses and bacteria. It purifies water, and since ancient times, it has been used to purify water. It, they say it reduces stress, it reduces inflammation, and so the infused water is, has been used for allergies, sore throats, asthma, gastric issues, arthritis, kidney problems, liver problems, gallbladder issues, autoimmune disease, pancreatic dysfunction, and chronic fatigue. It's an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, they do say it shields electromagnetic field emissions. And they did a study where they exposed mice to ultraviolet um, B radiation for two days. And it caused skin damage. And then afterwards, for seven days, the researchers applied the, the shungite solution to the mice's damaged skin, and it this decreased the ROS production and increased the activity of antioxidant enzymes. 
So these results seem pretty promising. You can carry it in your bag. You can pl some people place it near EMF sources and they put like the stones near devices like microwaves, Wi-Fi routers to shield from EMF. Um, some people just put it around their house and they say it helps distress and improve sleep. Um, there's a lot of different benefits of using this stone, but I've primarily just been using it um, in my water, which I really have enjoyed and I've had a really good experience with. And I do feel like the water tastes significantly better. So I do re recommend getting some of this Sunjite stone. And I got mine on Amazon and they have a bunch of different options. So with that being said, I just want to encourage everyone to prepare and just do different things like um, researching you know, how to be able to survive if anything were to happen and and really just ch take care of your guys' health. Take care of yourselves. Um, don't ignore things and don't wait. You know, take care of your health now and make changes that can help um, strengthen your body because our bodies right now are, are kind of experiencing a lot. And with the dent and the magnetic field and all of that like radiation exposure is just not good even if it's even if the the pothole is not where we are located it's still seeping through into the atmosphere and that's not good and over time that could be detrimental to life here on earth so I just wanted to update you guys on what's going on and in, in a couple days I'll do another update because I know that the scientists are anticipating a couple big, I think they might be M or X class solar flares, so we'll have to see what happens with those, but I will do an update in a couple of days. So I hope you guys enjoy your day and God bless.